What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Bitcoin daily video. In today's video, we are talking again about institutional investors. We're going to go over some more data on what's been driving this bull run all year long. We're going to show you proof that uh, institutional investors have been pushing this price up, which is why there's less price fluctuations. Um, and we haven't had those 30% drops that we saw in 2017 when the bull run was led by retail investors and not institutional investors. Make sure to stay tuned, guys. You don't want to miss this video. Guys, make sure that you like and subscribe, guys. Hit that notification bell and drop a comment. Let us know if you've been in this bull run. And if you guys are interested in using the exchange that we use, uh, we use Bybit. And in the description, we have a link where you guys can sign up through that and uh, you'll be able to get some rewards on your initial deposit up to around $100 or more. So without further ado, let's jump right in, guys. So the next thing we want to talk about is this chart right here. As you can see, this is from CryptoQuant and um, they, spe they specialize in a bunch of different uh, analytics and uh, analytical charts. So it's very, very interesting. If you guys want to check it out, it's CryptoQuant.com, crypto I believe. Um, but basically what this is here, you can see here, as it says on this tweet, BTC wells seem exhausted to sell. Fewer wells are depositing to exchanges. I think this bull run will continue as institutional investors keep buying and exchange well ratio keeps below 85%. So um, this line right here is the 85% line. Anytime that we're below 85%, the price continues up and the bull run continues up. But when we're above 85%, that means that that's when wells are looking, are, are basically selling. So when the money is in the exchange, that means that, that they're looking to sell or trade their positions. When the money is off of the exchanges, that means that they're probably off in cold wallets and other things like that. And they're not looking to, to trade it or sell it. They're looking to hold it. So here is the same graph in 2020 March, um, when the exchange, when the exchange well ratio was ranging between 85% to 90%. And you can see how Bitcoin's at that point, Bitcoin's price was kind of stuck. And then that's when there was a huge drop, right? Then in 2018, November's great sell-off, it was also ranging between 85% to 90%, right? As you guys can see here in November, the, the ratios, the exchange ratios were up. So that led eventually to a sell off here. Then if we take a look at 2019 during the bull run, when we ran up to about 15 K, uh, it was like 13, 14 K, something like that. You can see that the range of this was under that 85%. So when it, when it stayed off, when it stayed below 85%, you see that the price took off that meant because at that point, when it's under 85%, the wells aren't looking to trade or sell what they have. They're looking to hold at that point. And then last but not least in 2017, during the run to the previous all time highs, you can see that it was for the majority of the part, it was under, it was below that 85%. Now, of course, there's always exceptions to the, to these things. And there's always, you know, uh, times where it'll be over 85% or under 85% and the price will still go down um, or over 85% the price will go up. Um, but for the most part, what we're trying to look, we look back on historical data and we try to figure out patterns. At this point, everybody's trying to figure out, at this point, everyone's trying to figure out how far this mar market cycle is gonna go. So um, that's things like this just help us out to, to, you know, to know whether it is to continue longing or to start taking profits or to be more cautious with trades stuff like that all right so as we continue to analyze this bull run um we continue to look for uh what's you know causing this bull run um as you guys can see here this is bitcoin's realized market cap right it's currently around 186.6 billion dollars as of uh december 28th institutional investors are currently holding about 16% of Bitcoin's realized market cap. 
you can see you can see here that grayscale's asset under management is currently around 19 billion dollars and institutions assets under management is around 30 billion dollars right so that's about 49 billion dollars which is around a 16 percent of bitcoin's realized market cap so that just proves that this bull run so far has been led by institutional investors it's been led by institutions so the good is that they're probably putting their money in cold wallets and they're taking money off of exchanges they're not you know on exchanges just looking to trade in and out um so it won't make it won't let the Bitcoin's price fluctuate so much. So we won't have, uh, it might prevent like those 30% drop offs like we had in 2017 when the bull run was led by retail investors. It basically might make um, Bitcoin a lot more stable. And as retail investors start coming in, then it's just gonna continue to shoot the uh, Bitcoin price up. We can see here some of the institutions, what whatever it is that they currently have on record. And you can see how much they have um, and how much what how much they're up, right? So uh, for example, MicroStrategy, um, they put in around $1.1 billion um, and it's currently worth $1.6 billion. That is insane. So they have around 70,000 Bitcoins that they're currently holding. And then you could just kind of look down this list and see all the different companies holding Bitcoin um, that's been leading this bull run. You get, you, here's Square, you know, that they invested 50 million and that's currently worth 111 million. So they've already more than doubled their money. That's just crazy to think. Here's Grayscale. Um, and as you guys know, this is a little uh, late because this is at 13 billion. They're currently up around 19 billion. Um, so that's pretty crazy. They have uh, half a mil. They have over half a million bitcoins that they're that they're under management right now. So pretty crazy stuff to look at, guys. Uh, that all kind of points to what we've been talking about. Um, kind of hammering in the point that this bull run has been led by institutional investors, not by retail. So 2017 was led by retail investors which is why Bitcoin's price was able to fluctuate so much. And we had like daily 30% drops and daily, you know, 30% gains. Um, you know, this time around, we've been, it hasn't been fluctuating as much. Guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. Uh, make sure to please hit that like button and drop a comment. Let us know what you think about institutional investors. And if you think they're going to keep coming in or if you think they're eventually going to pull out. Uh, make sure to hit that like button, drop a comment, let us know what you think. And now we're about to tell you when is the retail FOMO gonna come in. So that's what we're covering next. If we go ahead and pull up the Google Trends, this is kind of more or less how you can tell um, the, the retail investors if they're coming in yet or not. Um, look, at, look at Google Trends in 2017 right that was at 100 in 2017 so during that bull run during the, the all time the all time high we were at 100 right look at where we're currently at right now we're at about 33 so that means we're 33 percent of the way to where we were um in 2017 as far as retail investors go that means retail investors are still not searching it like they were in 2017. The FOMO has not began yet. Um, and I think that the FOMO is going to begin in next year, in 2021, um, which is gonna lead the Bitcoin price higher. This is what could take us, you know, from where we're currently at, which is at like around 28,000 and could just shoot us up to like $50,000 in 2021. It's insane to think about, I know, but this is currently the reality of where we're at. So all in all, guys, um, as you can see, this bull run to new all time highs has been led by institutional investors. The big players have entered the game this year, which has pushed that Bitcoin price. Uh, retail FOMO isn't even here yet. And that's what's going to lead, I believe, in 2021. Um, retail FOMO is going to, it's what's going to drive Bitcoin's price even higher. So um, 
I still think that from this point where we're currently at, we could still double the price um, next year. So we might have another triple digit percentage, um, year to date percentage next year in 2021. That is not out of the question. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it brought you guys some uh, new insight. Um, I just want to give, I like to give you guys different, uh, different little points of information um, as much as possible. Um, you know, if the information is out there, I try to look for it and find it for you guys and bring it to your attention so that then you guys in return can make the best decisions possible with your own investments. Guys, make sure you like this video, uh, drop a comment. Let me think what you think. Let me know what you think will happen next year with Bitcoin's price. Do you think we can double next year again and go from where we're currently at around 28K to over 50K? in 2021 let me know guys make sure to subscribe i appreciate all of you and again we have one day left in this year if you guys missed it uh check out yesterday's video that we did uh where we talk about when we go into into detail five reasons why bitcoin has been on this bull run and why it will continue this bull run in 2021 so make sure to check that video out guys as always guys i'll see you on the next video peace and love.